Hello everyone, Delightful here. I like the novel and the new, so today, let's see what the indie world has for me and you. Today has some Halls of Torment, the launch of Halls of Torment. So I checked out the prequel about a month ago, which had these two characters and a, a free version of the game to, to pretty much wet the whistle to see if you like it, and I liked it, I liked it a lot. This is a Horde survival game that's heavily, heavily influenced by the first Diablo. Did you like Diablo 1? Do you like horse survival games? Do you like that kind of distilled power fantasy? Well, you probably like this game. I like it, so I'm going to show it. I have three characters. The Exterminator. You normally just start with the Swordsman, the Fighter, the Warrior type. And the Archer, who's kind of like the Rogue from Diablo 1. Ranger. Or Archer, we should say. And the Exterminator, who has a freaking flamethrower. I am not kidding. I'll click that. So as I go in and WSD and movement, there is gamepad support as well. This is Shrine of Blessing. That's where the meta, current meta progression is, as well as the quests here, which you also get meta progression of as you complete things. And that's just well, the, le the level you want to go through. Let's start with the starting level, Haunted Caverns, kind of like the Upper Crypts in Diablo. Entering from here. And we are good, and you just start, which is nice. Making sure we're going here, because I tend to lose track of time playing this game. So here we go. So I push spacebar, I get a list of my equipment. So this equipment here you can find in the dungeon. And then, let's see, I'm attacking. I can actually attack manually if I want. There's no real reason to do so, though. Because, well, I am. Well, I can aim to attack, but all I'm doing, I have to hold it down. That's all that adds, right? Because I'm not limited on fuel or stamina or anything like that, it doesn't matter. So you might as well just always attack. It's not slowing me down, something like 20 minutes till dawn when I attack. So you might as well just keep firing, right? It's a magical... <laughs> As I, as I level up, I get like an aura that knocks things back. And more attack speed seems good. I think that increases the ticks on this continuous damage flamethrower. Freaking melting the skeletons to sound incredible. As you kill enemies, those will not... Those are little XP orbs. Those will not disappear. Strength, I believe, will increase my damage. You can turn off the damage numbers if you wish. I think most people prefer them. And each, each of the characters feels very different. It's not just an aesthetic, right? So this character's damage is very linear, you could say in, tr in terms of it fires out as a ray, a continuous ray or a bolt, as the, compared to the warrior, which is a bit more of a cone, right? And it goes, you attack and you move, you attack and you move. It goes and it stops, it goes and it stops, whereas this is continuous. I'll kind of increase my pickup range, that's good. So those do not disappear, those are my XP orbs within run progression. And then the the gold you'll find, I'll find gold as I play, and that is the the mana currency. And also you're awarded gold, depending on how well you've done, right? How long you lasted, how many monsters you've killed. How many thousands of monsters you've killed, things like that. You see that skeleton that have Havis. The cool thing about the flamethrower is it goes right through it, as you might expect. Swiftness, 6% faster. And I'm actually quite a bit more than 6% because I have a bit of mana progression, so I'm 16 plus 6. So what is that, 22? So, melting things. Oh, you break those chests, get money. So that's the, the mana currency, the gold. Break their shield. There is bump damage in this, and but you have no iframes, right? So don't let them close to you. They'll tear you through down pretty quick. So do pay attention to the enemies. Longer fingers too. Why not? So that's eighty percent. If I'm ever uncertain, Let's see my values. Look here. Movement speed uh, five point oh, six point nine meters a second. XP gain. Pickup range is six meters. It's it's giving you the listing of all the buffs I have. It's quite a bit. Keep stacking. So, this is, I'm, I'm most really considerate these days, Horde Survival-like, Vampire Survival-like, those sorts of games, roguelikes or roguelites, just because it's so distilled, it's its own thing at this point, but the meta progression is very necessary to win in this game, right? You gotta fail before you win in this, this is a bit like Rogue Legacy in that respect, like most people are not gonna clear that game. Absent significant minute progression after significant power ups because you just need it. Most players, vast majority of players, are going to need it in this case as well. The movement speed buffs, the attack range, the the pickup range, all that stuff, and that goes for the gear you find as well. I mean, you can find these within a run, but once you unlock them and buy them from the the person, well, I'll talk about that when we die. If I die, huh? but I probably will. And you can unlock the ability to start those things as well. I'm sure at some point you can get like a reroll here. That's not currently in the game as far as I know. Burn chance? Yeah, so my flamethrower can actually burn things. Which is nice. Oh, uh, see, bump damage. And it's non... It doesn't... St I have no iframes, right? A lot of games will give you like a three or second... Three second iframes or something. That's a mid-boss. The first guy's not so bad. Just melt him and then he'll, he'll drop something really nice. 
think the first guy drops an ability. Now you notice that there's a pretty good enemy variety here, right? Those slimes, those metallic slime things, they have non-standard, non-predictable movements. They kind of just go up. Compare it to the skeletons, right? Just kind of march slowly towards you. So and each of the enemies feels different in terms of their movement patterns, what they do, how tough they are, things like that. So I want that that ability over there. They improved relative to the the demo, I believe. They, yeah, the, the prequel. They added so the the flame has like a lingering effect to it. it seems meatier than it used to be, which is good. XP bar off the left there. There we go. Ooh, Dragon Wave. I haven't seen that one before. Emits a wave of fire in the direction you're facing. The fire has a high chance to set enemies ablaze. This just seems like... Like, this is what this character would do, right? It's all about the flame, right? So yeah, more flame. And it's cone-facing, right? So it gives me a bit more off-angle shots compared to the more, more directed shots I currently have. Range. It shouldn't prove the range how far my projectile reaches. How far a melee attack or far a range projectile hits. Now, is a plasma... A blast of flame... Does that count as a projectile? I mean, yeah, I think so. I'd count it. Because it, it, I'm projecting it out of my gun, so... Alright. Very nice. So see, these enemies are a bit tougher. Their movement patterns are less predictable. They're smaller targets. And they kind of match the, the background, pretty much. Big pile of crystals there. Those do not disappear, so don't worry about having to grab those. Attack speed's good. I kind of like collateral damage. <laughs> not a bad movie from the aunts, anyway. Arnold. Arnold is a fireman, <laughs> which is, you know, pretty cool. Not sort of roll you off and see him in. There's usually a cop, kindergarten cop, or a Terminator, or a Green Beret, or, you know, depending on the movie. Now if you're in the mood for an action, it's like that's not a bad one, underrated. I love the skeleton side effect when you crush them. Getting levels. When you get when you level up like that, it's not just cool. Ooh, dragon breath coverage. That 0.15 additional flame wave, I think that reduces the cooldown, but the area effect 10%. That's that's something. Like when you get a percentage boost, anything below 5% feels pretty anemic, unless it's like something triggering off like some rapid fire. Which doesn't seem very impressive, whereas now this seems impressive. So I'm gonna try to lean into that this game seems to reward you with the, the quests or tasks you get, fighting dark ones there. Love it. So you see they're different as well. They tend to move in different pan in, in different manner, right? It's not just they look different, right? There we go. Um, more speed. So, speed. This is a horde survival like, right? So speed is how you survive. That's your primary. Well, wow, that blast is incredible. So speed's your primary survivability. You also have armor, like you can shrug hits and hit points and Hit point regen, all that stuff, but let's see if I can get like a vacuum effect off these items. Something else that was added in the the launch version of the game. Well, this is pre-launch, like a day before, but in the launch version of the game, it didn't hurt me. Cool. I'd say probably should. You know, just more challenge. Ouch. Ouch. But see that they kind of fall back a little bit. They're more tricks, as opposed to just walking dead towards you. Like the that blaster looks so good. I love that. So a lot of these games, you want to kind of do figure eights. You want to always go around circles of figure eights, so you can kind of loop through these hordes and get your goodies back. Because it changes so much having to having to loot what you having to grab what you kill, right? Okay, some more AOE. Because if you just got it when you when you killed them, you got the XP when you killed them. Well, that would change everything, right? Because you wouldn't have to. You would need courage to take terrain and hold it, or at least claim it. That's the second boss. Kind of sort of a more demonic butcher. Diablo, right? Diablo influence is strong enough yet. So the bosses are more interesting in terms of what they do. They have attack animations. Most of the enemies just do bump damage. Although the ranged guys do. So you want to avoid the purple stuff, purple stuff bad. And he also summons uh, dark ones. Little imps. And once I drop this guy, he should drop some gear. Yeah, the second guy seems to drop gear. Now note, I don't have a dash or anything like that in this. I would kind of like an active ability. Like a, a dash or a jump, or you know, depending on the class, you want to like have a <laughs> Diablo 2 sort of thing with barbarians. Though this is definitely Diablo 1 to the aesthetic. Or 
I have like a, a powerful ability to push every once in a while. See, if I was a little bit faster, I might have been able to avoid that hit. But my damage is very high. I'm melting this guy. Yeah, he's down. And you dropping anything for me? No. Chest. So that, that'll be gear. I didn't give it to me. Fine. I'll loop around again and grab it. Now, this game is somewhat realistic in the sense... Yeah, it's what survival like. Somewhat re 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 believable or realistic in the sense that... I guess I'll take strength. In the sense that you can't wear, like, three, bus pl three breastplates or five pairs of boots, right? You can take one pair of boots, one pair of gloves, an amulet, right? So it matters in terms of not just what's the best gear, like, but what it is, right? So what I have. I could take the armor, but I actually have that back at my base. The Scar of Toil, the Scars of Toil, plus, uh, there we go, here we go, percentages, 0 0.07 damage every missing health point. This, I would never take something like this. It incentivizes me playing poorly. I don't want that. Iron Ring, uh, I mean, okay, I'll take it. I'll take the ring, thanks. So, I got a thing now, right? I can never level up. When that, when that thing comes up, when you level up, that forces enemies back, so it's pretty cool. Very handy, actually, for survivability. 8% attack speed. Okay. I think I can... There we go. Yeah. Knock over the burning pit. What's that over there? That's the well. I actually rescued a... <laughs> hilariously... Um, funny character. I thought it was pretty funny. The voice acting I thought was really good. Very fitting. Kind of like a silly Deckard Kane kind of reference. If I can get to that well, you'll see. It's pretty cool. Like, I don't just get things I pull out of a dungeon. I gotta put them up the well and... Lift them back up to base because I'm I'm down to cave right. Pavises. That's actually not so bad for me. Like those guys can block shots from the ranger or the, the melee guy. You have to break their shield first. Well, I should I should melt them through it. I see. I like how it indicates that stuff's over there. So you should probably go over there. Well, you don't have to. You should. My DPS right now is good, but I think I want to kind of focus on it. Just can get it up a bit more. But if that cluster like this, I have to melt them all. And what are you gonna give me? Plus 0.15 health regen per second. Uh, health is look, looking good. I want damage. Uh, I guess I'll take this. Yeah, they're the mages, so they have actually have attack damage. Right? Because they're gonna range you. Try to waste them if you can, because they can score little hits on you. Melt them. There we go. You can find pickups too, which give you like this invulnerability, this 100% damage. There's a lot of cool DPS pickups. I don't remember from the prequel about a month or so ago. So see, the enemies are scaling up with you, so they are getting stronger. But the idea is that you you stay ahead of their scaling. Ow! So I'm not strong enough. I can just ignore them yet. I feel like I get there. Here we go. That mage there. So you see how powerful being able to have increased pickup range would be, because I can just nip in there and get a bunch of stuff. As compared to having to like get on top of it, 20% main weapon damage. Yeah, so that's huge. That's a lot more now. Take both of those mages, that's worth it. Ow. I'm choosing to slow my XP gain a bit to get to that well. Oh, I do wanna... It's an opportunity like this, and we're all clustered up. We've gotta melt them all. I gotta do it. Alright, so we got some slam spawn now. Ooh, Dragon Breath 2 Reach. Yeah, I want that. There we go. Look at all that fire. Wow. Something. Cast that's the boss with mid boss three. He's got a shield. He, you have to kill him twice, essentially. I think attack speed might be the thing to go for. Oh, cool. I got a vacuum. Wow. Multi hit plus 10% additional attacks. Okay. I mean, how does that work with a continuous damage weapon? I don't know. So that's going to be what? Pickup range is now 6.8 meters away. Pretty good. I got the vacuum, so I'm getting a lot of levels. The flame does look bigger. Piles of money. 
There, there he is. Got some apples. You get healing potions as well. I do wish, a bit of a critique here, is that, you know, you know, like Diablo, right? You can obviously see the Diablo references there. They're very prominent. Wouldn't it be cool if you, like, instead of... Because the big thing in Diablo, more, more speed, is that you can pick up potions, right? Diablo 1's all about massive amounts of potions. By the end of the game, you'll be filling your inventory with the damn things. Particularly on higher difficulties, right? So... And then you like, and then maybe after the fight you'll go back and see if there's anything you like. But in this one, when you pick a potion, you auto drink it. I'd like like a little little hot bar there for the potions, just to channel Diablo even more. And you know, give you another choice to make. When do you drink the potion, right? And then give you like active abilities. When do you use this other alternate fire, right? That's on like a longer cooldown. When you use that, maybe you get like a pit or pop up when it's ready to go. Or you get like a dash or a sprint. I don't know. Little things, right? This is good, but I already some might want more. What are you gonna give me? Phantom needles, fire needles, <laughs> needles. I saw. I want to put in it needlessly. No, not needlessly. At random enemies in quick succession, multi-hit increases attack speed. Okay. It's physical and has projectile. Arcane splinters shoot short-range projectiles. It's like a ninja star as it kind of spin out. Or lightning strike. I'll go with the needles. I mean, I want for more fire stuff, but. I mean, it, it seems like it's cone-like, whereas the lightning bolt is just kind of random where it roasts things. All right, another one. Are you giving me? Well, I mean, more damage. I want the damage to stay up. You don't want to fall behind on damage. Now it's just a matter of time before you die. <laughs> That's sort of picky demons here. In Diablo, you encounter these in the caves. Kind of like that. They kind of like that, but. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. They're, they look like Doom Piggy Demons, but they are also similar from Diablo as well. I'm pretty sure that was the, the Diablo influence from them. 20% attack speed on the melee. Those things. The needles. You encounter them in the caves. They are, they're pretty tanky. I mean, when you first encounter them, they're, they're pretty tough. Oh, they'll become something else. You can have, like, the uh, a poison gob or slime. So those drop acid. Acid. Completed. Destroy 200 objects. Yay. Yay me. Oh, hyper focusing on fire is really working for me. Got the dark ones coming again. So those acid guys, if enemies walk through that, I believe they'll take acid damage. And melting so much more fire. Yeah, they are so cool. I do too. I love that. So it makes them interesting, right? Just thinking. I want to hit spacebar to, to dodge there, but no, no, no dodge. Burn. You go through like class variants. Uh, I'm thinking like, what if my alchemist shot? <laughs> acid. But would it really change anything? It would just be green. Unless I had, like, like they do acid damage, right? But then you have to give enemies resistances, right? And acid have to behave different, like creating pools and stuff. More dragon breath, yeah. Fire fits, because even in Pathfinder 1, like, the base alchemist class, their damage is fire, right? Ooh, cool. Power up. Where'd you go? Oh, it goes vacuum. Nice, nice. Oh my god, yeah. Piercing. Piercing wind. Applies to the main character and all abilities if possible. Sure. I mean, that's probably not a good pick for me because my laser... My, <laughs> my flamethrower already pierces, but... Hmm. Good for the ranger. 20%. Yeah, so I probably should have taken that. I was just curious what it would do for me. The answer is I don't think anything. More attack speed. What I have noticed, at least in the prequel, is that the the, the skill ups that characters get t are, are a bit tailored and different depending on the class, right? I'm trying to remember a specific example comparing the, the ranger to the fighter. It's like the ranger tend to get uh, faster movement speed. Yeah, off memory. I think the fighter gets more more hit points, or really that. No, he, yeah, more hit points and more armor. So each class does have differences. It's not just what their primary weapon is and how they look, right? That damage is great. Take out the skeleton king. King of the Orcs to burn. Yeah, so he has different abilities, right? I love that purple flame, looks really cool. My flame's cooler, though. Of course. I'm melting them. Yeah, these guys, the blood skeletons, are pretty fast. Alright, look at that. Nice. The <laughs> needles are pretty cool. It's not quite good enough, though, my damage. I can't, like, ignore them in a path and just cook them. Attack speed, yeah. That should trigger more. 
going to be really cool in this game is if you had to reload, right? Because I'm firing a continuously spawning flamethrower, right? And then it's high fantasy, right, I guess. And then I have like some kind of prison flame vortex in this thing, my rune arm. Guys, more of an artifact or an alchemist. And he's just firing things. He's just continuously projecting the plane of them with a fire towards the enemies, right? That's very high fantasy, though. That's, uh, that's an Eberron thing. D and D Eberron thing. You know, contrasting with a bit of the the low fantasy, which Diablo seems to cultivate. The DPS is good. This is what you want. You want to focus your builds. You want to go deep, not wide, if you can. Right. Nice eyes, oh, guy. Hit me there. Just one hit's fine. You do regenerate slowly over time. Mm, piercing? Yeah, sure. Like that should help me with my my needles if nothing else. Now I can set it to the the game will aim for me, which is, but I don't like that. Like I, that's why I bounce off vampire survivors and most vampire survivor likes in general. This is not a vampire survivor life, by the way. I mean, I suppose it could be if you turn on auto aiming and auto attack, but then all you're controlling is your build and where exactly you walk, right? It's not enough for me. That's It's a game you can literally play with one hand, which, um, if that's what you want, cool, but like, it, it doesn't hold my attention. Rooflessness. Uh, I'll actually get more pickup range. Oh, I kind of blow through out of these shield guys. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, okay, we got the. Yeah, the teleporting wizards. They're pretty tough. They'll blink in on you. So drop those guys first. When they spawn, get rid of them. They'll just get a bunch of cheap shots on you. Those guys, the bigger slimes, they will spawn more slimes when you kill them. So it's quickly becoming bullet hell, right? Okay, ow. It's fine. No, no, I did say no iframes, right? No iframes by default after hit, so... You will be ripped apart by a horde. I kind of like that, actually. It highlights the danger of... One versus the many, right? That you know, if you're outnumbered, what they shouldn't do is just surround you and bonk on you. What they should actually do is grapple you, hold you down, you do whatever they want to, right? Or bind you. If you're like a wizard, right? That is how the weak may defeat the strong few, right? You surround them, exhaust them. Of course, my character can't be exhausted, right? Because I don't stand on the system. I mean, forced away from my loot, though, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I think my armor actually ate that, which is cool. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll build up the needles some more. Oh, we gotta escape. Take out that regular user. Skeleton mage, yeah. Oh yeah, it's getting pretty wild now. Oh, that damn looks so good. Oh my god. Melt. Just get some for it though. There are all sorts of classes. There's a necromancer, I haven't unlocked him yet. There's a sorceress, who actually is all about the lightning as a cleric. Who you get for killing a lich, I guess there's a lich in this area. Oh cool, I got a buff. Unholy strength, so temporary damage boost from unholy strength, so I'm now dealing double damage. That's good, I like double damage. So now, it's like, what do I, this wasn't in the prequel, so I have to use this, right? or I should use this, just melt my end as well as active. Like, I'd like to be able to pick those things up and turn when I use them. Get, like, like Heretic or Hexen. Right, and I have, like, an inventory. Because that was the game that introduced the inventory to the Doom like Right, and it let me choose when to use my, my pickup of immortality or my, my berserk power or whatever, right? And let me choose. Gave me more player agency, right? I like that game. Like, do that with potions, do that with the pickups. More speaks, I kind of need it now. Okay, take out the blood skeletons. Oh, that blast is beautiful. So the game's got a lot of main progression in terms of items, gold currency, which you use to upgrade all characters, other characters you can unlock, other items you can find. Ow, ow, two hits, ow, shark. This cat, this this guy here, I think that's the lich. It is. God. Yeah, so he's a teleporting wizard boss. He's good Ugh, I'm trying to run too much. Deal a million fire damage in one run. So cool. I don't know if I'm strong enough to take this yet. I didn't get to the well. I have to get to the well. Oh, more power damage. Yes! Man. A vacuum would be great. Okay, what okay. Ooh, what do I want? Mm, more damage. There's the well. There we go, I found it. So what I can do with this, leave one item here and retrieve it to the surface. So he, the well master, the well keeper is gonna pull it up. Retrieve. Oh, error there. Spelling minor. Items can be brought and equipped for future runs. So this guy, I rescued him, right? 
not retrieved. If I put it in here and then retrieve the item, he'll pull it back up. And then he'll he'll take a bunch of gold from me for the honor of always having it. But now, I lost that item, right, for the current run. So I've weakened myself for the current run, but I've strengthened myself for all future runs, right? So the meta progression. That's another part of it as well. So I have to risk myself fleeing to get to that. What I probably should be doing is trying to focus damage on him, but... On the, on the lich. God, oh god. I mean, I'm strong enough now where I can just walk through them, but I don't know how long that's going to hold. Well, I mean, mostly walk through. Wow! Oh. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good wizard. If I can just focus damage on him for a bit, I can drop him, but... I really need a potion. That's good. So you got the Tic Tic counter. I've killed 6,280-something. 6, 6, 6,300. Yeah, many, many kills. Best run, yeah, but also I've been occurring many progression, so not surprisingly. It makes sense. There you go. Where's your, where your hordes go now, Lich? Fragile stamina. So about 20 minutes without regenerating any health. Oh. That's not good. He, he bailed on me. He teleported away. I love it. That's a wizard move. Blink, misty step away. I got him. I got the Lich. Take that, Lich. A ring blade. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. You ever seen the movie Crawl? Incredible 80s movie. You should watch it. What? Oh, I'm... Hmm. What if I... If I take... Oh. I got excited, I thought I was going to get another Dragon's Blade. I'm like, ooh, do, do all my upgrades apply to it? No, it's an upgrade to it. That's really good, though. It knocks back enemies. Oh, yeah. So, it also gives me crowd control. Oh, what are those? Oh, those are scavenger... Oh, no, scavenger dogs from... Okay, oh, God, they're going to kill me anyway. Scavenger dogs from, say... Oh, I need this survivability, actually. Scavenger dogs from Diablo. I don't know what those are. I think I was just called scavengers. They'd run all the time. They're annoying. Not, not as annoying as the Archer Goatmen. Those are the worst. Haven't seen them in the game yet. Uh... Oh, we got Kelly. Oh, I got it. My speed saved me there. Oh! I needed one more second of continuous damage on that. So there we go. That's a run. Oh, that's a 20 minutes. So I've already would have beaten 20 minutes till dawn, right? <laughs> Torment score. What was it? Oh my. 2 million? Almost 2.1 million. And I got coins from that. I got coins from the coins I collected. That's I collected 465 coins. I, I lasted a bonus for my survival and the total. And I also complete those quests. Those are tasks you get. Yay! So I can collect, select my character here. We'll go with the swordsman here. These are the quests I did, right? So this is how you unlock characters, right? So again, you can look through. It's quite a bit. Quite a bit of unlocks. This is the, the swordsman's thing. So if I can deal 3 million damage with a main weapon. <laughs> yeah. Swift as an arrow. Scorched Earth. Milestones. Haunted Caverns. The Ember Grounds. So this is the the zone, Ember Grounds, right? Of the zone, Haunted Caverns. There are others. Haven't seen them yet. Swift as an arrow is the, the rogue. She's really good. Scorched Earth is my... Yeah, he's the exterminator, the, the alchemist. Or artificer, probably more artificer. And then I got 3k. Oh, wait. This guy. Hello, well keeper. So I could spend 4,000 and get a base 10 attack, but that's really good early. Or the wind crown, something else I unlocked. 1% attack speed for 5 seconds for each killed enemy. Eventually, that's going to be at 50%, right? When the horde really grows. So I might want to save for that. Hmm. Or Shrine of Blessing, and I can just get 3 defense. Shrugging hits. So I already have 16% area and projectile size. 8%. You see, that's meaningful, right? 8% is pretty meaningful. Increases the fire damage. Although, see, this would benefit exclusively the... Well, not exclusively. Benefit mostly the the exterminator. But the fire could also benefit if you took, like, Dragon Breath or something, right? Health regen. That could eventually be something. More hit points. Movement speed. That's that's huge. Pickup range is very handy. So, cool stuff like that. I'm going to play some more. I just want to give a bit of a primer and break up these videos because it's getting a bit lengthy. But this is Halls of Torment, everyone. Thanks for watching. Go play some more. Like, subscribe.